The location is Uruzgan province, southern Afghanistan. A coalition of modern armies has gathered as if on a galaxy outpost where the future has come to negotiate a treaty with the past. You have to be conscious that there are 37 nations and that uh, there's not a uniform view as to how they see the theater. And each of their governments wants their resources applied in a certain way. So um, my days are not uneventful. Out on patrol with the Australian Army, it can feel as if we've drifted into the 17th century. Nomadic herders go about their business with barely a glance at the latest foreign army to pass this way. The current war in Afghanistan is not created by Afghans. It's imposed upon us from outside. The field of view is limited not just by the circumstance of working from within the khaki perimeter of the army, but also by the complexity of a battlefield where progress is as hard to measure as it is to achieve. At the moment, I think their uh, respect is hard won. It continues to be that way. I guess at the end of the day, um, I can't give you a definitive answer just yet. Uh, I think the jury's still out, but uh, my feelings are that, that we are going forward. As fighting intensifies, mounting civilian casualties means mounting anger, including from the president. The disproportionate use of force to a situation and the lack of coordination with the Afghan government is causing these casualties. People trapped by the fighting are also directing anger at their own leaders. Generally, there is growing frustration with a lack of progress from the government, and that's across the board everywhere. And um, perhaps in some areas, they are thinking, well, maybe things were not so bad under the Taliban. Tonight, we travel with Australian troops as they fight to win people rather than ground. We examine the mission in Afghanistan to ask, is military victory that has eluded many before feasible, and can a nation be built where a nation has never been? The Badlands of southern Afghanistan is home for up to 1,000 Australians who've joined Task Force Uruzgan. In the hills beyond, there are villages with no roads and electricity, where life has not changed for centuries. When people talk in Afghanistan about the need for reconstruction and redevelopment, Many people smile when they think of Oruzgan because, in fact, you know, it's, it's an issue not of reconstruction, but of construction, of development rather than redevelopment. The biggest part of Oruzgan is mountainous, uh, very rough terrain, and 70% of the people are living in, in the valleys, in, in the cities, actually at the places where we are. Outside that is more difficult in the, in, the, in the mountains, so that will be something for later on. Task Force Uruzgan is one of hundreds of bases operated by an international mission with three objectives to implement security, reconstruction and governance. The rationale for Western intervention remains the same as it was when the Taliban and Al-Qaeda bases were overrun in 2002 either go to Afghanistan or let Afghanistan come to you. We are 
very, very grateful to the people of the United States of America for bringing us this day, the day of peace, the day of democracy. Since the, the democratic of election of the Karzai government in 2004, progress has faltered and the Taliban revived. Which is more likely, that the Taliban will succeed or the government will fail? I think the latter is probably more likely. Um, the Taliban, from what we know, um, don't have the military capacity to succeed in taking over the country. It just doesn't seem logical. They don't have enough forces on the ground and so on. But the government failing, I mean, that's a possibility because there seems to be a growing disenchantment with the government. This is where we transmit from. Transmissions are controlled from this place. The Massini family from Melbourne is busily engaged in its own reconstruction mission, establishing a commercial media network throughout Afghanistan. In a lot of the places, the government-appointed people are not what you would call the best people. A lot of them are accused of war crimes, some of them are accused of being involved in corruption and drug trafficking and so on. And in some of those areas, these people are seen to be the bad guys. So the government has aligned itself with the bad guys. And the Taliban are taking advantage of that by marketing themselves as being the protector of the rights of the people. In the south and east is Taliban heartland, where government rule has been long resisted. Hey guys, Hello. Uh, the Hello. EPT Hello. Battalion Commander, sir. Good Major Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Sorry, Major Four One. And we all we all do that in a, in a Dutch camp, so that's good. It's international. Task Force Uruzgan is led by the Dutch who work alongside the Australians, as well as some British and American forces, with an ultimate aim of handing over to the Afghan people. Okay, that's the nine. Beautiful. How much ground do you control here? Well, again, I don't talk about it in terms of ground. It's all about the people. Uh, open bits of uh, desert mean absolutely nothing to the, the mission that we have here. It's all about where the people are. When we're on a mission, we control the piece of ground we're holding at the time. Once we leave that piece of ground, uh, we no longer control it. So gone are the days where you walk over a piece of ground and you think, yeah, you assume that you own that. It's as soon as you leave a position, you no longer control it. The Australians know this place as forward operating base Davis. While it bristles with modern weaponry, the military base is also a construction camp. The main Australian contingent is Reconstruction Task Force 2, the second team of around 400 soldier engineers. We've come over here uh, very well equipped. Uh, we have armoured vehicles. We don't go anywhere without our armoured vehicles. Uh, we have uh, very highly trained uh, infantry and, and armoured uh, soldiers who give us protection and provide us that, uh, that hard shoulder to anyone who might want to do us harm. So at the end of the day, uh, I guess you could say it's a, it is still a dangerous place, but I feel um, very safe. The soldiers who venture outside the secure FOB, or forward operating base, have a name for those who stay behind, the Fobbits. There is strong emphasis on minimising casualties. The base is well protected from occasional rocket attacks. While there are regular excursions outside, most of the task force remains secure behind a series of blast-proof walls and within prefabricated steel bunkers. When the engineers leave camp, they try to do so at an unpredictable time. In this case, 3 a.m. A convoy of thick-skinned Australian bushmasters strikes out across country, avoiding...